it's Kevin Canessa coming to you from the newsroom of The Observer and TheObserver.com on this, the 12th day of September in the year 2022. Sure, hope you're enjoying your Monday, no matter where it is you are in the country. Not as hot, and uh, but a very humid day today here in the Northeast. And Tony Mondero of the Harrison Weather Center says we can expect some pretty crazy storms tonight, so... Hopefully it won't be too bad, no matter uh, wherever you are, but would be prepared for it. He said it's possible we could see winds of up to 60 miles an hour today. That, of course, wouldn't be so good, so secure all those things out in the backyard. As you do every Monday night, you welcome me into your home so that I can bring you this week's news. And from the left side of your screen, you can see this week's main story, A Safer Harrison. A few weeks ago, I was down at the... Harrison Gardens and Harrison Police Chief Dave Strumelow was there and he told me that they were going to be doing a soft opening for the new Harrison Police substation, which is over in the municipal garage by the stadium on the south end of town. And lo and behold, last week they had this soft opening. It will be used sporadically to begin. But the goal, once there are new graduates out of the police academy, is to staff it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, And that's a good thing down for the people in the south end of town where a lot of the new development is coming and where the new residents in town live. And it will certainly make things uh, a lot smoother in that neck of the woods. So a great job by the chief and Mayor Fife for getting this done and for the soft opening. And, uh, you know, in a couple of months, but maybe toward the end of the year, I think the chief told Ron, They hope to have it fully staffed and up and running 24 hours a day, but this is a good thing. And with the growth of residents, you know, Harrison saw a significant jump in the 2020 census. I think it went from 12 to 19,000 overall residents. There's a need for this, and it is coming at the right time. So congratulations to Chief Dave Strumelow from the Harrison Police Department and Mayor Fife for being able to get this done in the town council as quickly as possible. On the bottom of the front page this week, this man who you can see here is believed to, it was been arrested, well, let's start it off again and say he was arrested, and he was charged with a burglary in Lyndhurst, but it is possible that he has been involved with a significant amount of other home burglaries that are unsolved. And the thing is, he works at a company in Nutley. Uh, I, I never say this, right? I always say HVAC, HVAC company. And apparently when he was at this place where he is alleged to have burgled in Lyndhurst, he scouted it or scoped it out while he was on the job performing his work duties. So is it possible that perhaps he burgled other homes? I guess is very, very much possible, and police want to hear from you. So if you recognize him and you perhaps think that you may have lost something and that company that he works for from Nutley may have done some of that kind of work at your place, call the Lyndhurst Police Department and let them know. Man, it's possible it didn't happen. Okay, so let's make that clear. There's no... Uh, there's not a 100% indication, according to Vinnie Otieri, the public information officer of the Lenhurst Police Department, that that definitely happened, but it's always possible. So think about it. Maybe that was something that happened to you. Pathways to Independence is having its annual walkathon on the 24th of September. That is a Saturday. And in the process, for the second year in a row, they're having a tricky tray at West Hudson Park by the Schuyler Avenue entrance in Kearney. And there's some really big prizes, including some high-end handbags, according to Addie Boyd, who is a member of the board of directors for Pathways to Independence. So they're raising money with the walkathon, and they're also doing this tricky tray all at the same time. And this organization has been around since I can remember here in Kearney. That services not just Kearney, but the, the West Hudson, South Bergen area. Does great work for. Um, disabled adults and they have for years they give them job training they get them placed in jobs activities you name it pathways is involved so a wonderful event on the 24th of september if you're looking for a cause to donate 
they are funded federally and by the state, but they don't get everything paid for. So this is their biggest fundraiser of the, of the year with the walkathon and the tricky trade. So hope you'll be able to attend it. It starts at 10 o'clock that morning at the Schuyler Avenue entrance to West Hudson Park. So check it out, read the story, you'll find out more about it, and maybe you'll be able to get over there on the 24th. Now, I have to go back here because I double-clicked here. Uh, oh, no, I don't have page three yet. I'm sorry, so I'll get back to that. Uh, Lantern Flies, again, Lenny Twist, who is our dear friend, took this picture at Schuyler Foods on Schuyler Avenue. It was on the east side of Schuyler. And the tree is just littered with lantern flies. And the latest number I got from Armand Buddy Rhodes is 2,300 killed. And he said today alone he killed over 200 of them. So that side of Schuyler Avenue and, and that part of North Arlington seems to be getting inundated with these flies. They're disgusting. They say you're supposed to just squash them. I don't know. It's easier said than done, obviously, because these things are quick. They hobble, and they're just, like, out of control. But you see this tree. When he says he, he kills at least a dozen a day, when he goes, he goes over there once a day to get coffee and whatnot. So we'll see what happens. But be aware of it and let the Board of Health know. Uh, Carney Police Blotter from Captain Tim Wagner. I'm going to tell you something interesting about this. The headline, of course, is shoplifting woman who crapped her own pants ordered to get fingerprinted after she cleaned up. This story is already the most read in the history of the Observer.com since we started keeping track of web traffic back in 2014. Uh, more than 40,000 eyeballs have already read this story. I guess police work always seems to do well online, but I would imagine it gets a little further when that person defecates their pants to try to get out from being arrested or prosecuted. It sells even more. So um, Tim always does a great job putting this together, and it's a very unfortunate situation, of course, that happened there. But take a look at it and read it when you get a chance. Of course, you know by now Queen Elizabeth II died on September 8th, and we got a little bit of a local reaction to her death, something we used to do a lot in this newspaper. When something national or international broke, we would get a local reaction, and that's exactly what we did here upon the death of Queen Elizabeth II, who lost her life at the age of 96 last week. Jason Bernstein has three sports stories, including one about the uh, Kearney High School soccer team. The other is about the NA soccer team and uh, Harrison High School football. So you check all that stuff out and read that. For Jason is working hard to get everything uh, together for the fall season. It's a very, very busy time for sports and sports journalists. So if he hasn't written about your team yet, he's getting there. Just give him some time. This guy here who you see his face was arrested after he allegedly used a cell phone camera, lied down on uh, a, the floor of a store on Valley Brook Avenue and started taking pictures up a woman's dress in Lyndhurst. I guess he actually thought he was going to get away with that, but uh, he didn't and is now behind bars. We have two pages of classifieds, as we do every week. So if you're looking for a job, there are plenty of job opportunities, some apartments for rent, services offered, and things of that nature. So I hope you'll check that out when you get a chance to. And, of course, the edition is already up over at TheObserver.com. Give that a read now if you don't feel like waiting until the papers get around tomorrow morning. And that's going to do it for this edition of The Observer Live. And I want to thank each and every one of you for logging on and joining me tonight, as you do every week. Don't forget, we'll be back here one week from tonight unless something breaks in the course of the week, at which point we will join you live from wherever that happens. Can't believe it. We are already almost halfway through September. I mean, this, just, this whole year is just a blur, and it's going to be 2023 in a couple of months. It's going to be Thanksgiving and Christmas before we even blink. Can you even imagine that? Oh, good luck. So from the newsroom, of The Observer and TheObserver.com. It's Kevin Knessa. We're signing off for now, and we hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Good night, everybody.